Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing everything I have done to my face and my regrets since 2017. I'm now 25 years old and, oh wait, I'm 26. I've done a few things. I know a lot of you think I've done quite a lot to my face. If you've been following my progression over the years, it might seem like that. But I'm gonna discuss in this video, my rhinoplasty, my fillers. I've done fillers in a few places. Botox, as well as skin boosters, such as Profilo, as well as other cosmetic enhancements, such as my teeth. I'm gonna start off with the most positive things that I've done. First being the first ever cosmetic treatment that I did. That was my rhinoplasty. I got my nose done when I was about 18 and I didn't really do my research too well. So it didn't exactly go the way I wanted it to. I don't think I've got any side images of what my nose looked like prior to getting my nose done, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looked like after a few years before I got my non-surgical rhinoplasty done. So this was before and after my non-surgical rhinoplasty. If you don't know what non-surgical rhinoplasty is, it is where a doctor uses fillers to shape your nose. I would strongly recommend rhinoplasty, surgical rhinoplasty, but not non-surgical. Even though I have had it done and it looks amazing, I will go into why I do not recommend non-surgical rhinoplasty and why I regret doing it. First, I wanna say rhinoplasty, surgically, I absolutely love the idea of it. If you have a big nose or you have things that you don't like about your nose that you can't exactly change with a little bit of tweaking of filler, definitely go ahead and do it if it's something you really want to do. I'm not by any means trying to promote surgery. I'm just telling you from my experience what I love and what I don't love. So I love the fact that I got my nose done. It looked great in the beginning, but over time it dropped and it definitely kind of deformed into a shape that I didn't want it to be. So I'm strongly considering getting reconstructive rhinoplasty. Now I know I've been saying this for a few years. If you've been here for a while, you'll know that I've definitely been reconsidering it. It's now been two years since I did my non-surgical rhinoplasty. I'm gonna put this out there. I'm gonna be completely blunt and honest with you guys. Money is not the issue. It's just finding the right surgeon, which is my issue. I know I can go to Turkey and get a nose job for like 500 pounds, but that's absolutely not happening. The only issue I have is finding an ENT surgeon. Going to a plastic surgeon to do a surgery on something I actually utilize, like nose for breathing, is the worst thing I ever did. And I do not recommend it. You should always go to an ENT specialist, someone who specializes in ears, nose, and throat, because they know the inside of your nose and they don't just aesthetically make it good, they actually fix your insides, which a lot of people have issues with. It's not just the way it looks. That's my top tip. If you are looking to get your nose done, definitely go to an ENT surgeon, do your research, don't just look at pictures online, go to consultations and see the doctor yourself. You can't just go with the first doctor you meet. I did and I now regret. I was young, I was dumb and I had saved up money. I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Biggest regret, I also did it in Dubai. This is another point which I need to get to. Surgery is a big deal. I know a lot of people downplay surgery but going under general anesthesia is actually a really big deal. A lot of people overlook it. Recovery time is also an issue. I am someone who actually needs to allocate time out of my life at least a month for recovery. Ideally, it's about two weeks where I need to be in a cast. I'm not mad about that. I don't mind going out with a cast on. I've done it. I loved it. I'm not gonna lie. But it is something you need to actually consider taking time out of your life to go and get because you're gonna be swollen. I've got videos to shoot. I've got content to do. I know I can backlog, but I also have now five animals at home, which I need to look after. And I can't be doing that if I am stuck in bed. So that, like, that's another issue, but let's not get into that. So rhinoplasty in general, strongly recommend. Non-surgical rhinoplasty, I strongly do not recommend. First of all, it's not for everyone. If you have a bulbous nose, thick skin or like a wide nose or issues with just like your tip area or your nostrils. There's a variety of different reasons why it's not recommended for you, but you will not get the desired results you want, especially if you want your nose to look smaller. Just adding filler to it is not gonna make it smaller. Although I know there are doctors that can do it and they look great for a bit. The reality is it's never gonna 100% be what you want. The second point is that it's extremely dangerous. And this is something I didn't actually realize once I had mine done, but it is very dangerous. You can get necrosis, I think that's what it's called, which is your skin tissues die on your nose. And if it's not treated within a certain amount of time, 
your nose can completely fall off and just like disintegrate. I'm not joking. It's a real thing. It could have like a bad reaction and your nose can literally die. The nerves in your nose will die and fall off and your nose will turn black. That's not great. Also, there is a nerve in your nose which is connected to your eyes and that could also cause blindness. So if you don't go to the right surgeon, and I must emphasize this, do not go to a random girl that's just trained in Botox and fillers just because they're offering you a cheaper price to do your nose. It is such a dangerous treatment people overlook it so much and it's something which really needs to be spoken about because it's not safe. I know it looks great. It looks like it's completely pain-free and looks like amazing, super fast, great results initially, but it's not safe. The doctor I went to was amazing. I'd highly recommend him. However, my issue now, in retrospect, I wish I didn't do it because even though I got such beautiful results, I now have to wait till the nose filler has completely dissolved before I can go and actually get a consultation with another surgeon to re do my nose surgically. So if you are considering revision rhinoplasty, this is not the route you want to take. It is probably the worst thing you can do. So if you've had rhinoplasty and you're okay with just getting top up filler, which again scares me, I mean, I could always go and do that, but it's still never gonna be exactly what I want. I now have to wait or go back to the surgeon that I initially did my fillers with and get it dissolved. But then you're also stuck with the fact that sometimes the filler bonds with a natural collagen in your nose and the shape that you get after your non-surgical rhinoplasty can stay because of the filler bonding. Now this might be harder to dissolve and you might not get the desired results you want. I'm also really scared about dissolving the nose filler because like I said, my nose nerves could die. I could end up with a black nose or I can end up with no nose or I can end up blind basically. Very sorry. I know it's a huge trend. I know I spoke about how much I loved it, but I really regret doing it. So next, something I went overboard with and I'm sure you guys have seen over the past few years is my lip filler. Do I regret getting lip filler? No. Would I recommend it? Yes, but it also depends on who you go to and the product they use. I use Teo Seal. It's the product I've been using at Biolite. I'm very happy with it now that I've actually dissolved all the filler and just had one ml put in dispersed between my top and bottom lip. I think the beauty standard is moving more towards the natural kind of look. I've seen a lot of girls actually dissolve their fillers and look so much better because once you realize that you're just looking like that girl from Futurama and it's not a cute look anymore, you really really appreciate your natural lips and a smaller, more proportionate shape for your face. So would not recommend getting your lips overfilled, especially if you're going to the wrong doctor. And I would always say, if you want to recreate the shape of your lip, completely dissolve all the filler. You need to dissolve all the filler because you will then end up with like filler just going into wherever it can fit. So that might be like your upper lip, your lower lip, you'll just end up with like a really awful trout pout. The filler is only in my lips. I don't have filler up here, nor down here. However, I once did. I went through a phase where I was just overfilling my lip so much. It just looked revolting. And I didn't realize how bad it was looking back in the day. Now I look back and I'm like, why did no one tell me? People who were telling me what your face is. I don't regret fillers in my lips. I do love lip fillers. The biggest, actually, I want to talk about the biggest change in my face. Looking back at videos of me when I was younger in like 2016, 2017, I look pretty much the same except for one main thing. And a lot of people don't really consider this a massive change, but when I see myself, I'm like, I'm a different person. And that is my teeth. So in 2017, mid 2017, I actually got veneers with an amazing doctor in Dubai. There is a video of the whole procedure and it was honestly painless. I'm not afraid of needles. I don't hate needles. So I had about eight dental blocks put into my mouth and gums. I was completely numb after that. I won't go into much detail because there is an entire video on it, but I would highly recommend fixing your teeth if your teeth are bad because your whole face will change. Like even if your face isn't bad, but your mouth is bad, it can completely change your face. Another thing I do want to say is, I know again, you can go to Turkey and get like your teeth done for a pound. This is something you again use. You want to make sure you're going to a proper dentist that actually knows how to clean and prep your teeth prior to just adding an overlay. Also, you don't want to come out with chiclets because that's 
again, it's not the vibe. Nor do you want to have your teeth completely shaved down. A lot of people think that with veneers, your teeth get shaved down into little sharp teeth. That's completely false. That is basically crowns, if I'm not mistaken. And it's something which you shouldn't really be doing in your 20s. Like you don't need to do that. I personally did not have to get a lot shaved from my teeth for my veneers to be put on top. But in retrospect, if I had known what bonding was, I probably could have gone for the bonding option. However, I am so glad that I went to the doctor that I did and I got my teeth done with him because I'm over the moon with my teeth. I never actually saw them as a huge issue until I actually got them done and I was like, wow, the change in my mouth and my overall face symmetry is huge. And even though it might seem minor, it is very prevalent in the way I look and the way I speak. So if you are considering getting your teeth done, again, do your research look into good surgeons who know what they're doing, good dentists, even though it might cost a lot of money. The amount of people I know that have gone to Turkey and have done their teeth and now have like really bad breath constantly because their teeth were not prepped. It's not the vibe. Teeth, huge thing. Lips also made a difference. My nose also made a difference. I also did my jawline filler. This was a while ago. And honestly, I did not need it. I really did not need it. If I had just done a non-invasive treatment like Forma or Althera or even, I think Althera is actually kind of invasive because there's needles or, you know, radio frequency in general, just on like my jawline, I could have achieved the same results that I did with the filler. I did not need filler. This is my natural jawline. I got my jaw done, a, I think in 2017 or 2018. So completely dissolved, but this is my natural jawline and I'm very happy with it. I was literally walking around looking like a box. It was so unnecessary. I really wish I didn't do it. But now, you know, I'm happy with the symmetry of my face and the overall shape now that the filler has dissolved. We're good, I'm not complaining. But again, if you have issues with like facial fat and like just baby fat in general, you can always look into non-invasive things like radio frequency to melt fat. Circling back to cheeks and baby fat, I know a lot of people are discussing buccal fat, buccal fat removal, that is the surgery where they remove the fat pads from your cheeks and you end up looking like you have the most amazingly sculpted face without the little fat pads in your cheeks. Now this looks great whilst you're young and you've got the elasticity in your face. However, the older you get, the worse it's gonna be because your face is gonna suddenly collapse as it does naturally with age. And you're gonna be left with a very hollow sunken in face, which also actually makes you look a lot older. So personally would not recommend it. I know a few girls I've had it done and they look great. I'm not gonna lie, but it's not really something you wanna be doing whilst you're still young, unless you have an excessively large face. If it's something that can be melted down with radio frequency, then definitely don't get the surgical option. I also struggled with teeth grinding. I also said I wanted to do this just to have more definition, but mainly because I used to grind my teeth in my sleep and I've got veneers, so not great. I also don't wear the mouth guard because I don't like the mouth guard. I got masseter Botox. Now masseter Botox, I loved. It changes your face, like it completely changes your face. For me, it didn't really change too much of my face. If you look at these images of people I found on Google, you can see that their proportions have completely changed. So if you do have like a heavy jaw, like muscle, like you can actually feel it. If you clench the back of your teeth and release, you can feel your master muscle. So what the Botox does, it gets injected into that muscle and it relaxes it. So you don't feel so much tension. This can also cause headaches. So if you have a strong like master muscle, you can sometimes develop really bad migraines. I personally did not have it so bad. It was just very painful sometimes when I'd wake up and I'd have a really sore jaw. So I got master Botox. I did it once. That was, I think, two years ago now. The only issue I had was once it actually kicked in, I would find myself chewing and having pain because I was just, it felt like it was a lot of work to chew and I was like working the muscle. So that was my only issue. So I probably shouldn't really, I mean, I did it and it helped my issue, but also then I had that issue with chewing, which I'm not mad about because it just meant I ate less food. And I eat a lot of food, which actually circles back to my next point. Since 2016, I've lost a total of 10 kg. I, I wanna say 10 to 15 kg. Um, I'm currently at 40 kg. I am five foot and for reference, look at your nearest seven year old. I would say 12 because apparently my height is the average 12 year old, but I've not yet come across a 12 year old that is smaller than me or my height. Like, I don't know what you're feeding them these days, but like 
Look at the average seven year old, that is my height. So I had lost a lot of weight because personally I felt like I was too heavy for my size and I didn't like the way clothes looked on me. So I've been working out, eating cleaner, honestly. And that has also contributed to the way my face has shaped and molded. And it's also made my cheekbones stand out a lot more. My face has kind of gone sunken in, which I'm not super happy about. I felt like I had, I felt like having a rounder face suited me better. It is what it is. I haven't had cheek fillers. I personally would not get cheek fillers because naturally I do have high cheekbones and I don't think I need to look like a chipmunk. I like how I have a dip here and then you've got the definition of the cheek. Though saying that, previously I went to a doctor who decided to give me temple fillers. Temple fillers are fillers that are done here. Now the fillers that get done here basically create the shape of like an oval, which she said was the optimum shape for a feminine look. I didn't say anything, but I really hated it and I had it dissolved as quickly as I could because I did not like the look of that. It just, it did not suit me. I felt like my cheekbones suddenly submerged in my face and my eyes just kind of like didn't look great. Nothing really worked for my face. So had that dissolved. Another thing I love, I've kind of been flip-flopping between loving and hating things. Another thing I loved was Botox. Now, I initially got my Botox done because I have a very strong brow. Only one was strong. And when I was talking on camera, I could see that one was like really elevated and it looked like it was constantly like perplexed. And I was like, why does that happen? What can I do to fix it? So I had Botox put into my entire forehead into different points all over to basically relax that muscle. Now over the years, I get top ups every six to nine months just to make sure that my brow stays level and I'm not constantly like frowning. I did tell her to put a little bit extra in this time so I don't have any expressions in my brows. I mean, I still have movement, but I've never really had too much movement. I just don't want the wrinkles. And this basically is great for anti-aging if you are looking to do some anti-aging. <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, why are you doing anti-aging? You're 26. Well, I always say this, prevention is easier than reversal. So we want to prevent aging. It's called anti-aging. You can't do Botox to your wrinkles and hope to God, you're gonna look like 10 years younger. To prevent premature wrinkles, do Botox earlier. I love Botox. You can actually also, I wanna just point this out. If you have nostrils that kind of flare when you smile like this you can get botox on your nostrils to prevent flaring it is an extremely painful treatment i have not yet done it obviously i have movement in my nostrils but it is something you can actually do to prevent the flaring good luck with the pain i personally i've been told it's very painful so i have not tried it yet i also had botox done like here and that kind of I've never had like a brow lift. Even though I said I did like the whole Bella Hadid brow lift, it wasn't ever a lift because naturally I have high brows. This is literally my brow bone. I didn't want to lift it. I've never liked the look of like a lifted brow. I used to really like arch brows, but the older I get, the more like softer and flatter I want my brows because also it kind of gives you the effect of like a pulled back look. God, do not even get me started on threads. I haven't done threads. I have no intention of doing threads. It's just the worst idea in the world. And a lot of people are promoting it, but before you do any kind of surgery, always look into the pros and cons. I mean, I don't even know how people see pros in that because they all look crazy when they do it. No offense, you're all looking crazy. I've just had Botox here, here, and then like the top of my forehead in between to prevent those frowning lines, as well as around my eyes to prevent any kind of Oh my god, I don't have smile lines. <laughs> Love that. I've never had any kind of filler or Botox in my nasal labial, nasal Say labia. Nasal folds. Again, wouldn't recommend it because it's a muscle you use to smile and talk. So you don't want to add filler here because like it'll just look weird. I know a lot of people have had it done, but it just looks so weird. Like you kind of almost look monkey-like because it's just filled. Again, with fillers, unless you have like a really flat face, I would not recommend it. Just do things to melt the fat around the areas that you want sculpted. Don't go straight in and just start making the areas you want bigger to accentuate the areas. It just doesn't look natural. All in all, currently on my face, I've had one surgery on my nose, one ML in total in my lips, and Botox, three things. I also get skin boosters. I know a lot of people think I'm doing like some kind of weird thing, which is gonna completely change my face, but the Profilo that I do is actually a skin booster. It's a hydration treatment, which is which is packed with like hyaluronic acid to kind of just freshen up, plump in my skin and just make me look overall fresher and healthier and glowier. It doesn't enhance your face or your shape in any way. It kind of just 
not really pulls your face back, but it just makes your face look plumper. Never done hyperhidrosis Botox. Personally, I can't recommend it because I've seen what it's done to my friends. Like they'll get Botox in their armpits or their feet or their hand, and then they'll start sweating like from their back. I'm not down for that. Personally, I'm not really someone that sweats anyways, unless I'm in the gym. I hope this video helped. This is just a complete lowdown on everything I've done to my face. I hope that was insightful and helpful. I think I've done one of these before. I'll probably have the same views. I need to actually watch that video and see if any of my views have changed. If you have any questions on Botox, fillers, surgeries, treatments, leave them down below. Alternatively, you guys can come to Biolite for a consultation and find out what is best suited for your face. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. I will see you guys in my next video.